In modern cosmology and in modern astronomy, black holes have become a kind of a hypothetical answer to a lot of different mysteries in the universe. And by trying to understand how a lot of matter and energy interact here, and by trying to understand what happens at the edge of the black hole, but also what happens around the black hole or even inside the black hole, one day the scientists are hoping to find answers to many different questions. But at the moment it's still kind of difficult. First of all, because we obviously cannot see that far, and a lot of black holes are relatively small in terms of the size of their event horizon, and second of all, because there are still so many different mysteries, and we actually don't even have the correct physics to try to describe what happens inside the black holes. Generally speaking, the modern physics ends somewhere right here, right at the edge, and what happens past the event horizon is kind of unknown. And so because of this, for many decades now, the scientists, I guess to some extent, were more or less stuck. With ideas like quantum gravity, possibly in the future, explaining what happens past the event horizon. But at the moment, this is still in its infancy, and everything right here is basically unknown. Or is it? Is there actually a way for us to try to assess what happens inside the black hole by possibly seeing something on the outside? And so today we're actually going to be talking about one potential proposition, a very important one, about a feature of a typical black hole that not a lot of studies usually explore, but that the scientists now think is actually exceptionally important. A feature that sometimes is referred to as the photon ring. Something that ever since the original picture of the M87 black hole has become more and more prominent in various studies. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to talk about some of the recent discoveries and recent studies on the idea of the photon ring, what it means for our understanding of the universe, but more importantly, what the scientists currently know or don't know about it. But to start, so what exactly is it? So normally, in most of the modern media, and I guess in most movies today, the black holes are presented in this way. We have the beautiful accretion disk that creates the beautiful orange shape around the black hole, we have the invisible dark part in the middle, with a lot of media and movies often portraying the event horizon as one of the most important regions around the black hole. The region past which we cannot really see. No light can escape, everything just falls into the black hole after this, and it's impossible to escape even if you were to move at the maximum velocity. With a lot of modern explanations suggesting that at some point everything just kind of falls into singularity. Although it's important to understand that the idea of singularity or this infinite something is just our limitation of physics. Today we actually have no idea what happens past the event horizon. With two other features that often appear in media being the accretion disk and the relativistic jet. But not so long ago we also discussed this much better interpretation by some of the NASA scientists that actually help us understand some other really important features that are often ignored in media, while also explaining why we actually see these unusual shapes, such as the underside of the black hole, which actually represents the opposite side that's just folded and bent by the black hole itself. So in this image, first of all, you'll notice that there's also one edge that's slightly brighter. This is referred to as the Doppler beaming. Because the light on this side is coming toward us, and is actually moving away on the other side, it creates a kind of a Doppler effect, making one side appear brighter and the other side darker. We also have what's known as the black hole shadow, which is actually that black part that we usually see, which is normally about twice the size of the event horizon itself. In other words, this right here is not really the event horizon yet. This is the shadow, the event horizon is much deeper inside. The shadow is the area where a lot of light is trapped and can generally not escape the black hole, but in some situations it's still possible to maybe extract some of the information from here. But then you'll notice something else here, and this is the region we're talking about. The photon ring. It's extremely difficult to see it, it's actually very very thin, and it's also practically invisible here as well. But interestingly enough, when the Event Horizon Telescope team were trying to produce some of the earlier images, it would often appear in a lot of original data. And more recently the scientists started to realize that this region is exceptionally important if we want to understand what happens inside the black hole. But how exactly is it formed and why is it so important? So first of all, it's not really a ring, it's technically a sphere, mostly because it surrounds the entire black hole. And it's formed by a lot of different energy, a lot of light, approaching the black hole. Some of this light will end up passing the black hole and escaping, changing just a little bit because of the interactions with the black hole, while some other light will be stuck inside and very likely falling into it. However, certain particles might end up circling the black hole just once 
or maybe even multiple times and will actually start creating a kind of a ring that becomes easier visible as more and more light gets trapped around the black hole. In other words, it represents this unusual region where the light doesn't fall into the black hole but interacts with it in just the right way to be trapped around it for just a little bit and to then escape, reflecting the rest of the universe. It's actually been previously even referred to as the kind of a cosmic movie camera or infinite light trap. Because in this case, in theory, it could trap a photon indefinitely until it eventually escapes because of something else. And so here, at this region, the light itself starts to orbit around a black hole, although not really in a circular manner like we would expect around a star. It's going to have its own unusual orbit. But because we're talking about all of the photons coming toward the black hole from basically the entire universe, at some point they're going to reflect everything in the universe as this ring that you see. And so, at least in theory, if you were to take this ring or the sphere itself and to somehow reconstruct it, you would kind of have the entire universe reflected in a kind of a frame-by-frame -frame manner, almost like a movie. And some of these objects reflected here you'll actually see several times, so it becomes possible to learn a lot about the universe itself by observing this particular region. However, unlike the event horizon or unlike the regions inside the black hole, this region we can see and we can study. And more importantly, now the scientists believe that this region doesn't just reflect the rest of the universe, it also kind of reflects what happens inside the black hole. As in its properties or its measurements can help us understand what goes on inside the black hole as well. And so a lot of the modern quantum gravity theorists realize that by using the photon sphere or photon ring, they might actually get a little bit further in developing their ideas and in potentially creating just the right physics to explain the black holes entirely. With at least one recent study that you can find in the description below, focusing on the idea of symmetry that seems to occur around various spinning black holes. And this symmetry suggests that the ring itself will encode some of the quantum information from inside the black hole, making it appear on the ring as a result. Or essentially they believe that the quantum nature of the black hole then encodes some of the information on the ring, which means that by studying these rings, we can finally figure out what happens inside. With their paper even proposing that the photon ring in some sense can actually be seen as a kind of a holographic mirror of the internal structure of the black hole. Or I guess in other words, whatever happens inside a black hole plus the reflection of the entire universe should be visible and should be discernible on various photon spheres. And since the initial observations from M87 galaxy and all of the initial calculations and studies seem to have always produced an unusual ring around the M87 black hole, something that's sort of visible in these early simulations, it suggests that this could exist around all sorts of black holes out there. But I guess more importantly, presents an opportunity for us to actually see black holes. Or I guess in some sense, breaking their definition. Black holes are no longer invisible. You can actually see what happens inside the black holes by potentially observing this photon ring. Which might also help the scientists solve a lot of other mysteries, including the so-called information paradox we discussed in one of the previous videos, should be somewhere in the description, and eventually lead to a completely new physics model that might help us explain a lot of other things as well. Or to rephrase this, these explorations could maybe lead to the final bridge between the quantum physics and the general relativity, something that the scientists have been trying to do for the past few decades. And the theory here also suggests that various patterns observed around black holes seem to be generally governed by the photon ring. And as you move through various layers of the photon ring, you can also start looking at different layers of the black hole itself. With the study also suggesting that, in this case, the event horizon kind of becomes pointless. There's really nothing we can do with it, and there's nothing we can study to help us understand the black holes better. But the photon ring is an excellent candidate to study everything about black holes. With one of the potential explanations for the information paradox being that the information is stuck in the photon ring and eventually just dissipates as the black hole grows smaller in size. Or at least that's one of the potential explanations. The scientists in this case still have no idea how any of this works, or specifically how the information would be stored in the photon ring, but it's definitely a potential solution. And more intriguingly, one of the most recent studies on this topic might have been able to recreate the actual photon ring from the iconic M87. In this case, the scientists from that study remastered some of the original images from M87 galaxy, and by removing certain elements, were able to recreate the environment around the black hole, detecting a potential ring as you see right here. 
In this case, it was actually several layers of rings produced over a period of several days, once again implying that this is a kind of a frame-by-frame -frame movie, and naturally produced in a way that you see right here, as the photons get deflected by the black hole, or as they orbit around it a few times, they'll start producing more and more observations, and they'll start producing different thickness of layers, with some of the thinnest layers being the one that stayed around the black hole the longest, forming this right here as a result. Although this is still a very preliminary study, and some of the scientists are not entirely certain if this recreation is actually going to be accurate. As a matter of fact, some of the scientists already suggested that the current observations are just not sharp enough to resolve a very accurate ring, which means that it might not be super helpful to have this particular image. But the reality is that once the Event Horizon Telescope acquires new members and becomes even bigger, and once it's able to produce even more accurate images, at some point, a much more accurate image of M87 black hole, including of course the photon ring, can definitely become a reality and then allow the scientists to finally start studying this using actual data, which in theory might happen within the next few years. But until these future upgrades, the scientists are probably not going to be able to see these photon rings and can only rely on various simulations and mathematical calculations. It's also unlikely that we're going to learn much about them from various black hole collisions because those collisions, even though they do produce certain reverberations and certain vibrations, generally lose the information about the photon rings themselves. But it's possible that someone might figure out how to do this using black hole collisions as well. Nevertheless, more and more scientists now think that the future studies really should be focusing on the photon sphere or photon ring, not so much on anything else. In other words, this is really where a lot of mysteries of the universe are probably hidden, and this is really the part of the black hole we should be studying in order to try to understand what's going on everywhere else. But until we know more, or until there's another explanation or another theory that explains things even better, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, check out some other similar videos on black holes in the description below, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.